Tim.com slash offers slash EWTN and start listening today. The Eternal Word wherever you go on Sirius XM Channel 130. EWTN, it's everywhere. EWTN, live truth, live Catholic. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The litany of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. God, the Father of heaven, have mercy on us. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Holy Mary, pray for us. Holy Mother of God, pray for us. Holy Virgin of Virgins, pray for us. Mother of Christ, pray for us. Mother of the Church, Pray for us, Mother of Divine Grace. Pray for us, Mother Most Pure. Pray for us, Mother Most Chaste. Pray for us, Mother Inviolate. Pray for us, Mother Undefiled. Pray for us, Mother Most Amiable. Pray for us, Mother Most Admirable. Pray for us, Mother of Good Counsel. Pray for us, Mother of our Creator. Pray for us, Mother of our Savior. Pray for us, Virgin Most Prudent. Pray for us, Virgin Most Venerable. Pray for us, Virgin Most Renowned. Pray for us, Virgin Most Powerful. Pray for us, Virgin Most Merciful. Pray for us, Virgin Most Faithful. Pray for us, Mirror of Justice. Pray for us, Seat of Wisdom. Pray for us, Cause of our Joy. Pray for us, Spiritual Vessel. Pray for us, Vessel of Honor. Pray for us, Singular Vessel of Devotion. Pray for us, Mystical Rose. Pray for us, Tower of David. Pray for us, Tower of Ivory. Pray for us, House of Gold. Pray for us, Ark of the Covenant. Pray for us, Gate of Heaven. Pray for us, Morning Star. Pray for us, Health of the Sick. Pray for us, Refuge of Sinners. Pray for us, Comforter of the Afflicted. Pray for us, Help of Christians. Pray for us, Queen of Angels. Pray for us, Queen of Patriarchs. Pray for us, Queen of Prophets. Pray for us, Queen of Apostles. Pray for us, Queen of Martyrs. Pray for us, Queen of Confessors. Pray for us, Queen of Virgins. Pray for us, Queen of all Saints. Pray for us, Queen Conceived without original sin. Pray for us, Queen Assumed into Heaven. Pray for us, Queen of the Most Holy Rosary. Pray for us, Queen of Families. Pray for us, Queen of Peace. Pray for us, Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Spare us, O Lord. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Graciously hear us, O Lord. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Grant, we beseech thee, O Lord our God, that we thy servants may enjoy perpetual health of mind and body, 
and by the glorious intercession of the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, be delivered from present sorrow and enjoy everlasting happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in ora mortis nostre. Hello, family. When Mother Angelica launched EWTN, she wanted to honor the eternal word, Jesus Christ. More than 40 years later, the mission of the network remains the same, telling the nations about our Lord. Today, we hope that you'll help us continue Mother's work during our annual eternal word campaign. As the world rejects even the most basic concepts, like the definition of man and woman, and the dignity of life, people need EWTN where the truth of our Lord Jesus Christ is always proclaimed. Recently, EWTN launched ASIMINA, the Association for Catholic Information in the Middle East and North Africa. This is an Arabic language news service based in Erbil, Iraq, that allows EWTN to deliver faith-filled content to the people of this region who so desperately need to hear the gospel message, as well as providing a voice to our brothers and sisters in Christ who need their stories heard. This work of evangelization is possible because of the grace of God and because of you, our EWTN family. Will you support us today during our Eternal Word campaign and tell the world about Jesus? Thank you for your generosity. May God bless you. EWTN is 100% viewer supported. Please make a gift today by going to EWTN.com slash Eternal Word. You may also call us at 1-800-447-EWTN or send your donation to EWTN, 5817 Old Leeds Road, Irondale, Alabama, 35210. Live Truth. Live Catholic with Trusted Series features and specials from EWTN Home Video. The EWTN Home Video highlight for May is The Heresies, Volume 1. The Catholic Church has fought against many heresies from the beginning, and these errors still infiltrate our culture today. Since its founding by Jesus Christ over 2,000 years ago, the Catholic Church has faced attacks. Numerous hostile governments, tyrannical regimes, and revolutionary movements have sought to destroy the Catholic Church from without. But the greater threat has always been from within. In every generation, the Church has contended with heretics over questions concerning the very essence of the religion. We'll see how the ideological struggles of the past are anything but fossilized subjects, but rather living temptations with which the Church must contend again and again. Order your DVD at EWTNRC.com 24 hours a day, seven days a week, or call 1 800 854 6316. Hello, Journey Home family. Next time, we'll welcome Jacob Imam, a former secularist from a Muslim background, to share what led him to come home to the Catholic Church. Share the journey next time on EWTN's The Journey Home. EWTN. Live true. Live Catholic. Family, a prayer that we pray together is a powerful prayer. So please pray together with me our EWTN family prayer.
Today we pray for our pastor. Lord Jesus, eternal high priest, we worship you, our head. We thank you for our pastor who shares in your one priesthood, who acts in your stead, and who is the instrument of bringing your presence to us. Strengthen him, Lord, in times of trial. Be his consolation in times of loneliness and give him the joy of seeing the fruits of his labors. I will pray for him and assist him as I am able. For you bring many graces and blessings to me through him. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary of Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us, let us pray. Grant, O oh merciful God, that we may experience at all times the fruit produced by the Paschal observances. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. We set sail from Torres, making a straight run for Samothrace, and on the next day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, a leading city in that district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We spent some time in that city. On the Sabbath, we went outside the city gate along the river, where we thought would be a place of prayer. We sat and spoke with the women who had gathered there. One of them, a woman named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth, from the city of Thyatira, a worshiper of God, listened. And the Lord opened her heart to pay attention to what Paul was saying. After she and her household had been baptized, she offered us an invitation. If you consider me a believer in the Lord, come and stay at my home and she prevailed on us. The word of the Lord. Be to the Lord takes delight in his people. Sing to the Lord a new song of praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel be glad in their maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. Let them praise his name in the festive dance. Let them sing praise to him with tremble and harp. For the Lord loves his people, and he adorns the lowly with victory. Let the faithful exult in glory. Let them sing for joy upon their couches. Let the high praises of God be in their throats. This is the glory of all his faithful. Hallelujah. Lexia Sancti Vangeli Secundum Johannem. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will testify to me. And you also testify, because you have been with me from the beginning. I have told you this so that you may not fall away. They will expel you from the synagogues. In fact, the hour is coming when everyone who kills you will think he is offering worship to God. They will do this because they have not known either the Father or me. I have told you this so that when their hour comes, you may remember that I told you. Verbum Domini.
today in the Gospel, we see Jesus speaking of the Holy Spirit, the Advocate, he says, whom I will send you from the Father. We see this working together, the Father and the Son, whom I will send you from the Father. The Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will testify to me. And you also testify because you have been with me from the beginning. And we see this manifested in the Acts of the Apostles today with Lydia, who we're told is a dealer in purple cloth. And she apparently is of some means and has a house large enough to accommodate Paul and his, his missionary team. And we're told she's a worshiper of, a worshiper of God that she listened and the Lord opened her heart to pay attention to what Paul was saying. And she invites him to his home and prevailed upon them <laughs> to come to her home. But the Lord opened her heart and this opening of the heart is through the Holy Spirit and it is working in her to reveal the revelation of Jesus Christ to her. That the Holy Spirit, the advocate, is sent upon the church, empowers the disciples, the apostles to go out and to proclaim this Christ, the mystery of Christ, to make it manifest. We see the working of the Holy Spirit, of course, throughout Christ's life. <clears throat> the same spirit the church teaches that spoke through the prophets, sustains and inspires the church in their task of proclaiming the word of God and the preaching of the apostles and the authors of sacred scripture. <clears throat> That's right out of church documents. It speaks very beautifully about uh, the work of the Holy Spirit. And in scripture itself, we see that Mary, uh, that Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit, uh, conceived of the Virgin Mary by the power of the Holy Spirit. We see at the beginning of his public mission on the banks of the Jordan, the Holy Spirit descends on him in the form of a dove, that his anointing of the Holy Spirit is manifested at the baptism. He is the Word, he is always one God with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but it's manifested at the baptism in the River Jordan. We're told in Luke chapter 10, in the same Spirit, Jesus acts, speaks, and rejoices. Hebrews 9.14 speaks of that in the Spirit, Jesus offers himself up and as his mission draws to an end according to the account of John, St. John, Jesus himself clearly relates the giving of his life to the sending of the Spirit upon those who belong to him, John 16. So through his being glorified, through his death and resurrection and ascension, he and the Father send the Holy Spirit upon the church. So the risen Jesus, bearing in his flesh the signs of the Passion, then pours out the Spirit. Remember, he breathes on them, gives them the power to forgive sins in the upper room. And that the disciples them share, themselves share in Jesus' mission. There's the Great Commission, the sending out of, of the apostles. We see it at Pentecost, but also, you know, just the commission at the ascension of the sending of the Twelve. The Holy Spirit, we're told, was to teach the disciples all things and to bring to their remembrance all that Christ had said. To teach them all things and bring to remembrance all that Jesus taught us, working in us. He is the Spirit of Truth. He guides the disciples into all truth. And then finally at Pentecost with Mary, the Spirit is again at work in a powerful way, you know, empowering the disciples to proclaim the gospel, to go out from the upper room and preach. The Holy Spirit makes us, enables us to hear the Father's word, that the Father's uh, reveals to us himself his plan of salvation through his word. And that word is spoken through the breath of the Holy Spirit. And that spirit continues to work to dispose us to welcome the word in faith. So the catechism speaks of the spirit as inspiring the scripture, inspiring tradition,
guiding the church's magisterium, uh, filling uh, the sacraments, working through the sacraments of the church. In our personal prayer, the Spirit intercedes for us, works in the charisms and ministries of the church, he is working the signs and wonders that we see in the early church and the lives of the saints today, and even this, the holiness that we see in the lives of the saints, that manifestation of God's holiness is through the Holy Spirit. So he's very much present in our life and at work. And I think it's good to remember, you know, that Lydia's heart was opened uh, to pay attention to what Paul was saying. It's a good thing to remember when we're trying to bring, you know, our brothers and sisters uh, to the faith, to realize that it's not going to work without the Holy Spirit. It's actually, it's completely dependent on God's Holy Spirit. We might be called to give a word or to witness with our life, but it's the Holy Spirit that opens a person's heart to receive that word. As I said, Jesus is anointed with the Holy Spirit. It's manifested at his baptism. And when he is glorified, he sends the Holy Spirit with the Father to those who believe in him. The third person of the Trinity is poured into our hearts a spirit of communion that draws us into the mystery of church into the mystery of the church into the mystery of communion with Christ Jesus calls him the advocate the paraclete and this word means he who is called to one side that he's with us he's poured into our hearts he's working in us and that Christ's whole work is in fact a joint mission of the Son and the Holy Spirit. The two are working together. Church Fathers spoke of the two hands of the Father as the Son and the Holy Spirit. We see that in Christ, and I think this is important to say today, that in Christ the fullness of revelation of the divine truth is given. All that we need for our salvation is given in Christ, that he is the word of the, spot of the Father spoken to us. He reveals the Father, he reveals God to us in his plan of salvation. All that we need is in Christ. Matthew eleven twenty seven 27 says, No one knows the Son except the Father, no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Vatican II described it this way, that the deepest truth about God and the salvation of man shines forth in Christ, who is at the same time the mediator and the fullness of all revelation. That the word is the definitive self-revelation of God. It's the fundamental reason while well, the church is missionary by her very nature. Because we have this precious revelation in Christ of the Father, of his plan for us, and that impels the church to go out. As Paul, we see doing in Acts here, he's going out. The church is missionary by her very nature, that she is mission. She is sent out. And that's under the power of the Holy Spirit. So we, we enter into communion with God through Christ and by the working of his Holy Spirit. So we need to pray and ask for that spirit to work in our lives. We need to pray and ask for that spirit to be poured upon others for the conversion of maybe our loved ones, those we want especially to, to be part of the church. I hear it every day as a priest. People are concerned about friends and family, you know, their salvation. And we need to pray that the Holy Spirit works in their lives as he is working in ours. Because it's not all up to us. It's not just our words and our actions and our activities. If the Holy Spirit doesn't show up, it's not going to happen. So we have this absolute radical dependence upon that Spirit of God. We need to intercede for others that they too 
uh, receive that Holy Spirit. Let us offer our petitions to the Father and give him thanks for saving us from sin and death. That the faithful may find in our Holy Father and his fellow bishops true representatives of Christ on earth. We pray to the Lord. Lord that the leaders of nations may rule their people in justice and equity with concern for the poor, the marginalized, and the homeless. We pray to the Lord. Lord that the Lord may continue to bless the work of EWTN so that it may communicate to every man the love of Christ Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord for those who have died, that Jesus, who laid down his life for the flock, may bring them home to the Father's house. We pray to the Lord. Loving Father, our heart is glad, our soul rejoices, and our body abides, abides in confidence because thou never abandon those who have redeemed by Christ. Send us thy Holy Spirit to keep our hearts ever renewed in thy love. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. My sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And may the Lord Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant Church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit and perpetual happiness 
Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dominus Vobiscum. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he's destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with paschal joy Every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Stephen, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise for they offered for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, 
He took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei Mortem Tua Anunciamus Domine Et Tua Resurrectionem Comitemum Donne Elias Therefore as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high and the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Per ipsum et cum ipso et in ipso, es divi Deo Patri Omnipotenti, en unitate spiritu sancti, Omnis honor et gloria, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. <clears throat> Pray.
Precepti salitaribus moniti, et divina institutione formati, audemus dicere. Patrimus Quesumus Domini ab omnibus malis, da propitius pacem in diebus nostris, ut ope misericordia tu adiuti, et a peccato simus semper liberti, et ab omni perturbatione se cordri, expectantes beatam spem, et eventum salvatoris nostri, Jesu Christi. <coughs> Domine Jesu Christe, quid existi apostolis tuis, pacem relinquo vobis, pacem meam da vobis, ne despicias peccata nostra, sed fidem ecclesiae tuae, eam quae seconum voluntatum tuam, pacificare a quadernare dignitis, qui vivi sed regnas in secula seculo hordrum. Pax Domini sed semper vobiscum. Et Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word, and my soul will shine.
Jesus stood in the midst of his disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. Hallelujah. For those who cannot now receive Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, we offer the following prayer. O my Jesus, I believe that thou art truly present in the most blessed sacrament. I love thee above all things, and I desire to possess thee within my soul. Since I am now unable to receive thee sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace thee as being already there, and unite myself wholly to thee. Never, never permit me to be separated from thee. Amen.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dominus Fobiscum. Benedicat vos omnipotens Deus, Pater, et Filius, et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen. Ite The Holy Father's prayer intention for the month of May is faith-filled young people. We pray for all young people called to live life to the fullest. May they see in Mary's life the way to listen, 
the depth of discernment, the courage that faith generates, and the dedication to service. Much of the day is spent at work or school. We typically forget to schedule God into our busy lives. We have to study for that test or watch that video or go to practice. It seems that in all the commotion of everyday life, we can't fit God in. On a busy day, I wake up at 5.45, start school at 7.10, end at 2.10. From 2.10 until 3, I do homework. From 4 until 8.45, I have dance class. From 9 until 10.30, I do more homework and get ready for bed. Many times at church, I hear how we should spend an hour with God every day. But with crazy packed schedules, with work and activities, it can seem difficult. Instead of this deep plunge into an hour of worship, try to take five minutes out of your day to spend with God. Once you get comfortable with this, add on another two minutes, and before you know it, you'll be spending a full hour in prayer with God every day. Even on busy days like this, I could find five minutes to spend with God. He is definitely worth the time. Ask yourself, how much time is God worth? Welcome to Catholic Blitz, and today in the hot seat is Father Ken Brigenti. Are you ready? I am. Let's go right, for it. Let's look. What are the four last things? And you have one minute. Okay, four last things. Well, first of all, you got to die. <laughs> okay. okay. So death is part of it. And then after death, you have the particular judgment in which our blessed Lord ratifies your good and bad deeds. And if you are good, uh, then, you know, there are what happens after that, You there's heaven, of course, but some of us might need to go to purgatory for a little bit, which is sort of like the anti-chamber uh, before into heaven. And then if you're bad and you des decide to be against uh, the Lord for, with, uh, by your actions and thoughts, then he just ratifies that and you go to hell. So those are the two places. Now, there's also what we call uh, the uh, general or the eschatological four things, and that would be the second coming of our blessed Lord at the end of the world, and then the, the rising of the bodies from the grave, the bodies in their glorified state, and they would be reunited with their souls. And then after that would be the general judgment, which ratifies the particular judgment, and then at the end is the end of the world, and that's it. And we're at the end. Good job. Thank you. See you next time on Catholic Blitz. Life is a battle. You're fighting back hunger from your family, the world's influences from your kids. You're fighting to build a world and a future, not just for yourself or for your children, but for your grandchildren. And most of us don't get to be kings carrying swords into a battlefield as we fight for those we love. We get stuff like this. <laughs> this is my grandpa's, John Stefanik. He used this as a Slovak immigrant to build the dream that I am currently living today. You see, most of us don't get to build up a world or, or fight for those we love in a way that's worth writing about in epic stories of great heroes. But here's the thing, not worth writing about doesn't mean not worth living or not worth celebrating or not worth great honor. God spent 90% of his life, 30 of his 33 years on earth doing unnoticed quiet work, things that didn't make the story of the Bible because they weren't worth writing about. I think he was trying to tell us something in those missing pages about what makes life worth living. St. Joseph, guardian of the Redeemer, patron of the Universal Church, terror of demons, spent his whole life hidden from any worldly honor. And as a poor, hardworking dad, the Bible tells us that he offered two turtle doves as his temple offering, which was an accommodation for those who couldn't afford a lamb. No one knew how important and amazing this man was, except Jesus knew. The woman he saw on the pillow next to him every morning knew. And God wanted Joseph to know. Joseph, son of David, is how an angel addressed him in a dream. But Joseph's dad was Jacob, right? <laughs> no. The title, son of David, was a reminder that, Joseph, you descended from King David. And even if the world doesn't see it, you have royal blood coursing through your veins, like your father before you. You are a king, a hidden king. I'm sure he remembered that title many times in the midst of the daily grind and stress of life, washing his 10,000th dish for the Holy Family, putting his shoes on for work for the thousandth time, doing his millionth load of laundry. <laughs> and remembering that didn't change the daily grind of life. It changed him. He didn't wonder, is there any point to all this? 
He did those things with the dignity of a king because God reminded him of who he was. Listen, God wants to remind you of who you are. The quiet work of the everyday, God sees it. And those titles we tend to overlook, that the world doesn't celebrate, that have nothing to do with fame or money or worldly honors, titles like mom, friend, brother, son, dad. Those are the greatest honors you could possibly have bestowed on you. God knows that. Do you? St. Vincent de Paul was born in France to a poor peasant family on April 24, 1581. Growing up, he was educated by the Franciscan friars and was ordained a priest in 1600. St. Vincent helped to reform clergy and prepare men for the priesthood through spiritual retreats and trainings. He traveled all over Europe preaching and serving the poor, and he established hospitals and evangelized to convicts. He founded a religious community of priests known as the Vincentians, as well as the Ladies of Charity, a lay institute of women. He also co-founded the Daughters of Charity, all of which served the sick and the poor. He died on September 27, 1660, at the age of 80 in Paris. He was canonized on June 16, 1737 by Pope Clement XII. The St. Vincent de Paul Society, a Catholic organization dedicated to serving the poor, was established after his death in 1833. He is the patron saint of charities and horses. St. Vincent de Paul, pray for us. EWT, live truth, live Catholic. EWTN invites you to join us in this rosary as we pray for peace in Ukraine. During this month of devotions to the Blessed Virgin Mary, we will continue to pray the Holy Rosary, which she recommended to us in her apparitions at Fatima and Lourdes. After offering this spiritual bouquet of roses to Mary, we will then ask her aid and protection using a prayer of St. Bernard of Clairvaux. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Amen. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those who must live in the fires. The joyful mysteries, the first mystery, the Annunciation. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those who must be in second joyful mystery, the visitation. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, 
and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins. Lead all souls to him, especially those who most need. the Nativity. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Amen. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins, lead all souls to heaven, especially the most mystery, the presentation. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Amen. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and it shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fire of sin, lead all souls to heaven, especially those who must be. child Jesus in the temple. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O oh my Jesus, Mercy towards us, 
and after this our right, son, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O Clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, For the attentions of the Holy Father, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And bring us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. O Mary, conceived without sin. Pray for us in the close to thee. Prayer to Our Lady of St. Bernard of Clairvaux. Run, hasten, O Lady, and in your mercy help your sinful servant who calls upon you and deliver us from the hands of the enemy. We will not sigh to you. We sigh with love and grief, for we are oppressed on every side. How can we do otherwise than sigh to you? O solace of the miserable, refuge of outcasts, ransom of captives, we are certain that when you see our miseries, your compassion will hasten to relieve us. O oh, our Sovereign Lady and our Advocate, commend us to your Son. Grant, O oh, Blessed One, by the grace which you have merited, that he who through you was graciously pleased to become a partaker of our infirmity and misery, may also through your intercession make us partakers of his happiness and glory. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Veneration is respect accorded to saints or angels because of their holiness and union in heaven with God. It can be given directly to saints or indirectly through their relics or images.